hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> On the 11th of July 2022, a short post was made on the Equestrian the Game Discord server by the Ambassador Sable regarding a rather alarming situation apparently brewing behind the scenes. The final line summed up the situation quite quickly. I've been here since the beginning of Equestrian the Game, and I'm disappointed in the way this company has treated us. This post would be quickly deleted by the dev team, and for a short while all became calm once more in the Equestrian the Game Discord server, but this would not last. There was a very ugly cat in a very filthy bag and it was raring to get out. And the end result would be the complete shutdown of the Equestrian The Game Discord server. An element of game design that is often overlooked these days is the community of your game. Because we are all constantly connected and we want to see updates, you are, from the very start of your game, creating a community. A great game will never be great unless it has that dedicated community that believes in it. They can, without fail, save a game from death like with Alicia Online, or if a community turns its back on the game, it will without fail eventually die. A game cannot survive without players. And in this case, it seems that ETG seems to be wishing for this to happen. By now many of you have perhaps heard of the story. The ETG Discord dev team decided to boot almost all of its ambassadors and mods quite suddenly, with the only explanation given in a copy-pasted reply, which one dev, in particular Molly, had been sending out. This led to an explosion of epic proportions and would, as I said, result in the shutdown of their Discord server. But before we can get to this point of the story, we need to establish why exactly this unrest had been brewing, what led to this point, why there was such an intense backlash, and why ETG is still treating this entire situation so poorly. Before I continue though, I must impress on everyone watching this video. Do not harass the devs or moderators. Do not insult or attack them. Do not contact them. Not all of these developers were privy or part of this. The only name I will be mentioning is Molly and Nicole as both of them have been at the forefront of the fiasco. But it applies to them as well. Leave them well enough alone. Let's get into it. Equestrian the Game is a horse riding mobile game from Cavalry Games which was co-founded by Molly. They are small but with a very dedicated development team. To make her dream come true for making a horse game, Molly received a total of 3 million krona in funding. Now that's a total of about 2.8 million dollars. This is not a small sum for funding in any stretch of the imagination, and they quickly got to work on their game. Bit by bit, she would hire developers and designers as the game garnered more and more attention. But in 2018, they were still small fry and barely a blip on the radar. In these early stages, they had a private Discord server and almost no one to moderate it. The first people invited on this Discord were 30 beta testers who had applied for the position. This was in 2020. With the shared development looking promising, these spots were grabbed up very quickly when the announcement came out for beta testers. As the Discord grew, a need for mods became almost definite and over time they added people they thought were friends of the community, so to speak. According to these early players, the developers really did care about their input and took their experiences to heart. In short, they listened and communicated fully, and this helped to grow the game far quicker than expected. As the community boomed, more people would be switched over to be given moderation statuses. Now, to be clear, this position was not dictated. Your real life always came first, and as a result, Calvary did give a lot of leeway to these moderators. Some companies will demand that you post X amount of messages a day, for example, but Cavalry forwent that demand and let the players moderate as they saw fit. It was a truly nice concession. One beta player turned moderator made well over 1,000 posts on the YouTube of Cavalry, answering questions and helping out as best she could. This is just to kind of showcase how active and dedicated these people were. She would also stay up at late at night and help manage the streams when they were live. Despite being technically a full-time employee, she was not paid a dime. This will become a common trend throughout the story. The server continued to grow. More and more people were added to the moderator and ambassador groups to help keep it running smoothly. To be clear, the difference between ambassador and moderator was mostly power. Both were there to answer questions and help with queries, but the moderators could ban, kick and moderate the Discord, whereas ambassadors could only interact as a normal player. You had to be an ambassador first before you were given the title of moderator. But overall, their duties aligned quite seamlessly. Keep the Discord safe, welcome new members, answer all questions asked, keep out negativity, keep players calm and happy. What negativity means is mostly critical. In one Xmod's words, we were always told to make players calm down cause the negativity was stressful and too much. 
So by this statement, we can infer that the negativity was affecting the devs and they didn't want that negativity spread around. The problem is they never clearly specified what that negativity entailed. And overall, it just seemed to translate to any sort of criticism of the game. But overall, the people were happy, at least at the start. The developers were communicating with the Ambies and the mod teams and they really seemed to care and listen to what was being said. Until the first soft launch. On the 7th of July 2021, the game was soft launched in New Zealand. Players were happy that the game was finally being handed into their hands and the Discord server was quickly swarmed. The first launch was met with a slew of new players to the Discord. The moderators and ambassadors had to embrace all of these new players and quickly help them with any questions or queries. During this time, some players who were helpful were also promoted to ambassador status. One told her story, saying, Flattering DMs from the mods and ambassador teams fueled me to keep going, to continue helping, to ease the workload. Two straight days of being a random player helping out without any compensation, without needing compensation, just doing it out of my good own will. She would be given ambassador status and later moderator status. You could also apply for both positions, but often it was your dedication and helpfulness in the service that ensured you a spot. You had to stand out for the right reasons. This means that the people who were hired had a passion, who managed or moderated or helped out because they wanted to, not because they had to. Their worth ethic came from their love for the game. After the initial launch, some of the ambies and mods became aware of a slow distancing between themselves and the devs. One issue in particular was the beta player input felt like it was being ignored more and more. Many bugs and issues were still prevalent with soft launch. After bringing this up with the dev team, the response was, it's just a way to test some things. They decided to leave it for the time being, the game had just become bigger and they were probably swamped. Very much understandable, so the mods gave them a break. One story was shared by Nuia, an ex-moderator. Uh, the Discord had been a private server for a long time, so the mods had to sort out the server by adding new channels, organizing the sections, the rules, fixing the cooldowns and so on. It was a shit ton of work and what did they get? A hard task and one which was met with little to no thanks or compensation. Just to be clear, they didn't even get compensation in the game. No coins, no cash, nothing. Their only thank you were rare and sparse thank yous from the devs. Another ex-mod who had spent a lot of money on the Patreon and had worked her way up from player to ambassador to mod had a few things to tell. She said that the frustration in the Discord had been growing at this point, but very little was being done about it. Despite bringing many issues up to the devs, they were ignored and she finally made her own post about it, saying, Guys, so much of the stuff you promised isn't out yet. These and these bugs we have reported haven't been fixed yet. Do you really think it's time for the soft launch? I haven't touched the game much because it gets boring so quickly. I don't think this will work out. It bothered me a lot that there were... There was no way at all to earn premium currency through hard work too, and I also criticized that. None of the stuff I ever said was commented on by the team much at all. Very shortly thereafter, a community manager contacted her with the following message. This might be a bit hard, but the team has been reading the moderator chat and they felt that you've been a bit negative lately and we can't tolerate that. Sadly, we'll have to remove your moderator role and replace it with a beta tester role for now. There will always be a chance that the mod and ambassador role could be reinstated to you though. We just want to thank you for everything you've contributed in helping ETG's community and Discord. You've been a real trooper, but we feel that you need to step down and focus on enjoying the server, then moderating it. I'll have to remove your roles now. Rightfully, she was shocked and floored by the message. Just like that, all her dedication and hard work was taken away for doing nothing more than stating an opinion, for asking that the game be better. What made it even more bizarre was that an ambassador at the time had been breaking the NDA over and over again, yet she received multiple warnings while the moderator received none. This clearly shows where the focus of the founders lie, not breaking rules, not being unruly, but stating an opinion contradicting their own can equal to a figurative death sentence. Another ex-moderator recalled the instance and explained it a bit further from their perspective. I had my first doubts when I removed her in July 2021. This moderator was one of the first four mods and the most loyal, passionate person a team of developers could ask for. She was removed for giving constructive criticism about things in the game, which Cavalry just deemed negative. Rightfully angry by the situation, she contacted them and tried to politely state her opinion. She pointed out the contradictions by the devs, who would quickly boot a moderator for criticism and then turn around and keep an ambassador who constantly broke the rules. 
She went on to say that she wanted to be treated fairly and she wanted them to listen to their moderators. You needed to be better today. You lost one of your best members in your community because you were not. And here was their response. We admit we did mess up massively with not giving her warnings and unfortunately we cannot go back and fix that. I've reached out to her and offered an apology and wished her all the best in her life. She was a very good moderator for ETG and I'm sad that she is gone. However, the team decided that this was best for the server and I gotta stand with them. We've promised to ourselves that we will not repeat this same mistake again. There was too much heartache from us and the others affected by this. We will do better if we notice something like this happening again with Discord ambassadors or moderators. Thank you for sharing with me. Spoilers, it did not get better. All that mattered was positive and friendly responses, nothing else. But this situation did have another effect. It meant that the remaining ambassadors and moderators saw quite clearly what happened when you spoke up against the developers, and this placed a figurative clamp on their mouths. With each new country open to the public, the Discord became fit to bursting, and all the management of that influx of players fell on the already overworked mods and ambassadors. Throughout this, they were told, keep out the negativity and keep it kind and friendly. This became a sort of mantra and started to brew a wider frustration among the player base. Many players have recalled the frustration of being silenced on this Discord, myself included. According to the ex-mods and ambies, this was the reason why. They were told to keep negative comments out and keep positive comments in. The mods stood behind the developers as they were there to help. They believed in them and wanted to do as much as they could to help the developers. The devs are fanatic about keeping any sort of negative thought out of the Discord. We can clearly see here casual, friendly conversations and then a dev waltzing in to silence them. To be absolutely clear, the mods were following orders. The devs took this to a whole new level and often enforced this no negativity law to such a degree that it stifled constructive criticism and by extension, it stifled the community. The players by extension lost their enthusiasm to discuss the game. I know this happened to me personally because every time they brought up a negative point of the game, the white knights or the devs would come in and silence them. And they were doing extensive damage to the game through this violent need to defend it. I spoke earlier of the importance of a community and here is the main reason for that. A healthy community will mean a healthy game. A toxic community will mean more problems than you care to handle. The problem comes in when you create the problems in your own community. What a lot of people forget is that when you are positive about a game, you are by definition representing that game for that small time frame. Whomever you are speaking with does not matter. It is the people who hear or see your comments that it will affect the most profoundly. And they will have one reaction to your snide and snippy comments about no negativity. This community is toxic. I'll steer clear. You are deliberately pushing people away with your toxic positivity. By telling people things like, don't like it, don't play it, or move on to something else, or you're just being negative, does no one any good. And it doesn't do cavalry games good. Honest opinions will do them good. Truthful opinions would do them good. But most of these conversations were stifled and smothered under the veil of too negative. And so cavalry games started to starve its community of the one thing the game desperately needed, constructive criticism, because the game has a lot of problems. But this was by far not the only problem in the Discord or the game. There were numerous bugs still in the game, and they took their time removing them. The horse models had been nerfed. Where the original models were beautiful and striking, the newer ones were downright ugly in comparison. The horses themselves had been nerfed in the trailer as well. The problem with this is that many players now have high-level horses and the new players have no chance in getting one, which skewed the balance in the older players' favor. Remember, there is a leaderboard in this game, so you will never be able to top the leaderboard because your horse is always below the level of the people who were there first. Another issue we can't really ignore is the fiasco of the horse tails. Now, there was a fluffy tail that was a feature that a lot of players, including myself, quite liked. Now, clues in the title, this was a nice, big old fluffy tail that some horses could be found with. Now, one tail in particular that no one liked are the now-dubbed dragon or lizard tails. Essentially, it was a tail that was plaited, but, shock of all shocks, it looks like a dragon or a lizard tail. Not exactly the most, um, attractive tail you will find. Players did not exactly make their dislike of this tail a secret, so when an update was made that they were removing a tail from the game, everyone was quite happy. Until it turned out that Cavalry decided to remove the fluffy tails and not the tail that everyone was having a problem with. I think that's the most evil thing I've ever heard of. <laughs>
No explanation was really given, and despite trying to find an answer, the question of the game really didn't seem to care that people were upset over the removal of one of their favorite features. Essentially, players had to kind of suck it up, and all of their complaints were once again just kind of shoved under the rug. Finally, many players never received their Patreon rewards, and this caused more friction when the Patreon page was suddenly closed. And if you complained about anything, criticized the game or the way it was handled, in the dev would swoop and ask you to please stop being so negative. It is affecting our work ethic. You can imagine the slow build of frustration. It was a powder keg being filled up and just waiting to go off. But time marched on and the developers became more and more distant and the mods and ambassadors were still not being compensated or appreciated. And now they were being outright ignored. When a new update was posted to Instagram, the ambies and mods were not made aware of it until the players told the Discord ambies and moderators what was happening within the game from the Instagram updates. This brew more and more frustration from the mods and ambassadors. How were they supposed to run the game's Discord when they didn't even receive information about the game? But it was about to get a little worse. The frustration from constantly being silenced was reaching a boiling point and the players were starting to lash out. Some mods reported that the players started to harass them. This came usually after they had to shut down a conversation in the Discord. I personally recall a conversation I had with a moderator way back when. I contacted them when I felt like I was being shut down and they politely explained to me that they're just trying to keep out negativity. The part that struck me as odd though was when she said that she was happy that she responded to me as she was worried that she was going to get attacked again. These ambassadors were being attacked, called names and belittled by players because they felt like they were being silenced. It got to the point where the entire feedback thread had to be shut down to keep a lid on it. The mods issued this statement, once again pulling the ire of the players and once again the devs, Molly in particular, were nowhere to be found. On the 23rd of March, they soft launched in Europe, and the mods and ambies saw the same difficulties, with even more frustration from an already fed up audience and moderating team, as one ex ambassador stated. It was, sorry, hell for a few days. So many questions, the same questions, same bugs, same errors, etc. But the community always loved us and they loved the help. So we just pushed through like real champs. But the team continued their pattern to stay away from the Discord and us who asked for help. Clearly. Although they worked hard and dedicated a lot of time and energy, these people were not at all being appreciated for their hard work. Another ex-ambassador said this, Most of us stayed up all night helping the players, and we didn't get a single thank you from the team. The global release was the same. Since then, we had no idea what the updates were going to contain, so we continued to tell the players what bugs had been fixed and which ones were still active. The frustration continued to mount from both the mods and the Ambies team and the players. The powder keg was at this point fit to bursting. <laughs> Then, finally, after months and months of hard work, the game was finally globally released on the 8th of June 2022. And much like with the European and earlier soft launches, the mods and ambassadors were downright drowned in questions, queries and welcoming new members. As one ex-ambassador put it, A global release, let me tell you, I drank at least 5 monsters and over 14 cups of coffee to stay up all those hours. It was hard work, a shit ton of work to be honest. But we pushed through, again, like world champions. And it was so worth it. Every time someone said thank you, it just fueled you to answer the next question. However, there was still no response from the team. And remember, these mods and ambies were not getting any compensation for these hours of work. Global saw a huge influx of players, but still no developers. And the screws were tightening, making tempers short and frustrations boiling over. But they had a job to do. And the mods and ambies put aside their frustrations to focus on a now far more pressing issue. Testing the breeding. The breeding has seen a lot of issues. Very few people are impressed and fewer still enjoy it. It is a slow process of waiting up to four days for a foal and then usually getting a bad foal, which brought to focus the nerfing issue. A game-wide nerf was implemented when they dropped the horses in the trailer from over 70, 50, 750 potential to no more than 740. The issues became compounded when we realized that breeding at best gives you 710 horses. But before the breeding could be released, it had to be tested. And this would prove to be another problem, as an ex-ambassador explained. And the testing was the worst beta test so far. They had zero plans about anything. No ground to walk on, no backup plans, nothing. Yet they gave us three days to beta test a whole new function. 
and the I.O. Play S players only a few hours. Yes, I blame the delay of Apple on them. Why? Well, if they would have had a plan and actually thought of this beforehand, the delay would not have been an issue. No feedback from the beta testers was implemented and the breeding landed in a broken state in the game. Soon the Discord was flooded with upset players and all the mods and ambies could do was try to curb the wave from flooding the already sinking ship. And where was Molly? Or most of the devs? Nowhere near a social media page to help out their drowning mods and ambassadors because they'd taken a fuck vacation. Then a video was posted called The Cavalry Has Arrived. It was an interview with Molly and Axel, the two co-founders. And although the video was a little dull, there was one line that sent the mods and ambies into full barbarian rage mode. We're still developing it in collaboration with our community. We interact with them daily. We have our social media, Discord, YouTube, Insta, etc. where we connect with the player. We talk to them and we let them decide which breeds to add and so on. It's been an ongoing collaboration between us and them. <laughs> You serious? After months of near dead silence with little to no feedback, no appreciation, no compensation, it was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back and the first mod spoke up. Since the release, the devs basically packed their stuff and left the server in the mod's hands, leaving us with way more work, yet no thank you has been given in any way. I'm so tired of having to silence people for saying their opinion and rightfully giving the criticism to the decisions made here. As a mod, we aren't told when important things happen either. Oh, a new update dropped? Let's tell everyone on Instagram so that the server members can give the info to the mods. It's a joke. We need to know these things. Soon after, this person was promptly stripped of their title as moderator on the Discord. With the situation handled, Molly congratulated herself on keeping order on the Discord and went back to work. I am too smart. I am too smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-R-T. But the same day, another ambassador made a new post. We are not appreciated. We are not seen. We are taken for granted. Without the moderators, this server would be chaos. It would look horrible without any kind of structure. It would have unclear rules and guidelines. It would be dead. I have never seen them get compensated in any kind of form except one mere thank you. The community sees the moderators and ambassadors as part of the team. And should they not? We work for the team. For free. Let me say that again. For free. None of you in the team works for free, right? I am sick and tired of working my ass off for this game and getting nothing back. When I signed up to be an ambassador, I had hopes that the team would be there for me, just like I am there for you every day. And I'm not alone with this feeling. So how can you as the original team fix this? First, stop lying in interviews. You don't have daily communication with the community. We do, not you, none of you do. Start to appreciate us. Without us, the game would burn to the ground faster than Titanic sank. Start communicating with us, because we are the foundation for this Discord. We are the foundation to the community and its health. Give us information, ground to walk on, answers to many of the questions we deal with. Give us information about an update before the update comes out. We are part of the team, so start treating us like it, because if you don't, you won't have any of us left. Five mods and ambassadors react to this, and Molly, seeing her control slipping, responded in the only way she knew how, by blaming it on the other party. Finally, I have to push back on some of the things in your statement. I understand the frustration, it's valid. However, I won't accept accusations of lying nor the aggressive tone towards the team. I want us to keep building this community, but we can't do that with resentment. If this is how you feel, it's for the best that we part ways here. I want to sincerely thank you for all the efforts you put in, and I respect all of you for having us on this journey. I wish you all the best. <laughs> These are people who have been with you for two to sometimes more years. These people have been loyal followers. They have been giving their heart and soul to this game. And your response to that is to kind of throw everything that they've said away because they used the incorrect tone and then telling them essentially to fuck off. If they don't like it, they can leave. It really rings a lot like don't like it, don't play it. And that's the type of community you've bred here. People who just don't give you any sort of criticism because they can't because this is your response. You have such a knee-jerk, defenses-up reaction that no one can speak to you. No one can really discuss with you what the problem is because you keep deflecting and pretending that the problem lies with the other person. These people were asking for help. 
they were calling out to you to address a situation that was breeding. And your response was, if you don't like it, leave? No, this is not how you do this. And this is the reason why the damn Discord exploded. Two ambassadors would respond to this post. If this is how you treat us and try and blame us, then I feel sorry for your staff and I can't imagine what you blame them for. And goes on to tell Molly to remove her ambassador role because she can't support a company that treats people like this. Another ambassador repeats Molly's word from the interview back at her, adding, we interact with them daily. Really? Are you sure that you interact with the players daily? Or are you just taking credit for the ambassadors and mods hard work? My tone have all the rights to exist in this context. If you'd put down time and energy on something for a company and never got anything back, would you not get angry? I bet you already had jobs during your life where you got treated badly. You get angry. You talk to family or friends about it and probably quit the job. No? I care for this game. I care for every single player out there, even the most annoying ones. That's why I'm telling you, make a change. An ambassador liked the post that was made, but Molly did not take to this impromptu rebellion well and responded. Okay, I'm ending things here and I'm removing your ambassador statuses. The ambassador that made the post and the one that agreed were both stripped of their titles and left to lick their wounds. With three people gone in less than a day, it seemed to stir up a lot of unrest in the group and another post followed shortly thereafter. This was from Korzoi, a popular mod in the Discord and had been with the company since European launch. She worked her way up from ambassador to moderator and this is what she had to say. Okay, I gotta say this, I'm done. After seeing the way everyone's been treated, the way my friends have been treated, I can no longer support this ordeal and turn a blind eye. I am done. Goodbye. I hope you turn for the better in the future, but with the way shit's going, it's unlikely. Corzoe would leave before Molly could exact her wrath and strip her of her titles. She would not give Molly that satisfaction. It was at this junction when this short post was made by the ambassador to explain the situation. By this point, players and mods and ambassadors were fed up. The horse models had been nerfed, the abilities had been nerfed, the breeding was terrible, the gameplay was still broken, players were still angry for never receiving their Patreon rewards, they were still being silenced and finally the devs had decided to go on vacation, leaving the moderators and ambassadors to deal with all bugs and issues in the breeding system with little to no help. And in this buzzing mess of frustration and growing tension, the post was dropped right smack in the middle of it. The post was quickly deleted and a proverbial hush fell over the Discord, but the devs had lost control of their mods and ambies. These people were making their voices heard, angry and bitter at the situation, and they had to respond quickly. They had to fix it. Somehow they had to fix it. And Molly, co-founder of Cavalry, decided to fire everyone who had liked any of the rebellious post, but just not how, with a copy-pasted message. You're an idiot! We noticed an increasingly negative mood among some of the mods and ambassadors lately. Cavalry has decided to, at least for the time being, part ways with the mods and ambassadors who have been aggressive towards the team or otherwise display the behavior that doesn't follow our number one rule, being kind. This is so we can work towards a server being a positive space where everyone can feel safe. Thanks for understanding and wishing you all the best. This is the definition of what is called and known as toxic positivity. For those of you who don't know, toxic positivity is when people dismiss negative emotions and only respond to distress or issues with false reassurances rather than empathy. This actually comes from people who feel uncomfortable with negative emotions. Although it is absolutely well intentioned, it can cause an alienation and a feeling of disconnection. One of the signs of toxic positivity is minimizing other people's experiences with a feel good statements or quotes. The reason why toxic positivity is harmful is that, and I quote, toxic positivity can silence negative emotions, demean grief, and make people feel under pressure to pretend to be happy even when they are struggling. In some cases, it might even be self-imposed. Furthermore, toxic positivity can also pose a serious threat to emotional stability. Positivity can become toxic when it is forcefully used to downplay, delegitimize, or undervalue negative emotions. You have been abusing these people in a direct sense. Toxic positivity is not the way to keep this discord happy, Molly. Honesty is. But it's after this that all hell broke loose. The first post came from Grey, the first moderator of that day to fall and whose message left, was left up for some reason. Then came Nuiya, whose message quickly summed up the situation of what happened. This was instantly removed, but the damage was done. An explosion of confusion ripped through the Discord and soon players were asking questions left and right. It quickly became apparent that Cavalry had slapped a hornet's nest. The mods might have been frustrated, but that frustration had leaked over to the players and the muzzle had been torn off. And an explosion of epic proportions was about to tear through the entire- No.
Actually, what happened was that these people remained cordial and kind. They kept asking questions, but as we can see by these posts, they are asking politely for answers. They're a little hard, but overall, the answers didn't satisfy, so they kept asking. Some of us were hard on them, I was, but none of us were being unreasonable. But I got banned for it, for specifically calling Molly out on removing people she did not agree with. But even after getting the boots, a few of my friends were good enough to gather as many screenshots as possible. The players were mostly siding with the bots and ambassadors. After months of being smothered in positive thought, being forced to say only the best, having no freedom to express their frustration, they turned their ire on the devs. Although certainly not all of the devs were an issue, they were however the reason these moderators and ambies were removed. And the players were looking for answers. Some called out to mods for help, but there was only one mod left and a few ambassadors and they couldn't keep up with everything. Molly would continuously ask everyone to stop, but no one was really listening as they wanted answers. How dare you! These angry players have been interacting and communicating with these moderators and ambassadors for months. Many of them were liked, some of them even considered friends. The devs at, who at this point had barely communicated with the players were alien, foreign creatures for which they had little feeling. Unsurprisingly, the players chose the side of the mods and ambies, but still they remained quite cordial. The onslaught continued until Molly, in her wisdom, decided to take another bazooka to the situation, take aim and fire at the hull of the sinking ship. She made the following post. I want to sincerely apologize for the lack of communication from Cavalry side during the spring. Following the Europe launch, our community teams had an intense workload in other areas, like customer support, and in periods, it just hasn't been possible for them to be as present in the server as they used to. I take full ownership for putting our community managers and consequently our moderators in this situation that undoubtedly have been overwhelming at times. It led to the mods having to carry a huge load in managing the growing server. The ones of you who have been around for a long time has probably noticed the change. So you know that you've been overwhelming them. And when they spoke up about it, your reaction was not to address the situation and make it better, but to fire them. Do you understand why people are angry at you for this message? You didn't speak to them. You didn't try and find some sort of solution to the problem. No, you just fired them because they had dared to criticize you. We recently created a feedback form instead, as we thought it would be easier for us to get an overview that way. What do you think? Do you have any ideas on how you want this server to look like? Please think about this for a bit and shoot me a DM if you feel like bouncing a few ideas. This is a discussion that should have been had with the moderators. This is a discussion you should have had with the moderators. I'm going to say this one more time for clarity's sake. This entire paragraph is a discussion you should have had with your moderators. Why are you asking your community when your moderators brought the issues to your attention? Finally, a word on tone, positivity and general mood. I have zero tolerance for bullying. You are a bully. Within the context of what toxic positivity does to people, yes, I will consider you a form of a bully. You don't need to hit down with fists, you don't need to harass people, and you don't need to be mean to be a bully. A bully is someone who affects someone else's lives negatively, and you affected a lot of people's lives negatively. Hence, you are a bully. This might not resonate with all of you, but the number one reason for this server's existence is fun. Fun. We're making a game and if anything it should be a source of happiness, not anxiety. This comes after you caused months if not years of anxiety and unhappiness in your discord and in your moderators and ambassadors. This comes after you fired your team despite being loyal people who had dedicated years to your game with no compensation. So to conclude, I will together with the rest of the team work out a plan on how to improve Cavalry's communication and commitment to this server. We're open to your opinions and feedback. No you're not. This entire video has proved it. This whole situation situation has proved it, you cannot handle any sort of criticism. And you say that I want to clarify that criticism, even harsh critique, is welcome as long as it's delivered in a respectful and calm manner. Well, you keep... <laughs> These people were giving you criticism in a respectful and calm manner and you ended up shutting down the Discord. You ended up adding cooldowns because you didn't want people to continue discussing the situation because you wanted to silence us. You keep wanting to silence people and that is what's frustrating people, Molly. I'm trying to give you some sort of advice, but I doubt you're gonna listen. We as a community have reached a point, a breaking point. I have been banned for being willing to tell you exactly how it stands. Nuia has been banned for being unfairly treated and being angry about it. People who have spent years working on your game for free were chased out this week because you, Molly, could not handle any sort of criticism. These people were passionate as you are. More so because they did all of this for the sake of it. They never received any compensation and still, without fail, they helped you. They held your service together every single time it grew bigger. And what thanks did they get? What did you give them for all of their hard work, Molly? A boot in the ass. 
One ex mod shared a wonderful Japanese saying that I would like to share with all of you. The protruding nail will be hammered in. These mods and ambassadors were all nails that needed to be hammered in. But you, Molly, were too lazy to even do that. Instead of cultivating these people into something strong, you decided to get rid of them. But the problem is, Molly, without the supporting nails, the entire building will crash. Captain, may I have a word with you? No. It's an emergency, sir. Come back when it's a catastrophe. <laughs> But unfortunately, this whole story does not end there. After the mass firing of their moderators and ambassadors, ETG decided to get a new community manager, seeing as their original community manager had left as well. This new manager was thrown into the fray, and she was left to sort out the mess. It was very apparent that she was not quite aware of the situation. I personally filled her in, but I received very little response. However, the players were still upset and were demanding any sort of answer. Molly had at least started replying to questions posed in the Q&A section, which alleviated Nicole, the new community manager, somewhat. But the situation was not really cooling down. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. But they had a plan to cool it down, by literally adding a cooldown of first 5 and then 10 minute intervals for the chat. They also removed the option to react to any posts, because this is apparently bullying. No, like, no shit, this word is apparently bullying. <laughs> This prompted a new reaction from players. Fed up with the whole situation, they targeted the game's reviews. They bombed it from a 4-star game to a 3.4-star, and I believe it's still going. The players continued the assault, trying to desperately to get the devs to listen. By this point, the ex-moderators had moved on from the Discord to create their own Equestrian the Game community Discord. But the players still had a lot of issues to deal with, and the devs were not exactly addressing the situation. <laughs> Players methodically posted their problems one by one, slowly, but by bit, they posted and continue to do so. Then, Brian posted this behemoth of a message. You can't silence us. This entire issue started because the player base, vital if not the most important part of your game, felt silenced. These issues will not be resolved by silencing the community further. All these insane cooldowns and the bans and mutes and timeouts being handed out like candy, they're only going to make it worse. They're only going to reinforce the viewpoint and opinion that the ETG cavalry team is oppressive and only listens to those who praise them to the heavens. If this isn't a red flag, what is? Cavalry failed in even showing gratitude towards those who kept the game and its community standing, by rewarding them with the most gracious of rewards, removing the unpaid Discord team. Yes, good job. Round of applause, everybody. Falling, failing at the point they claim to be upholding so chivalrously. Patreons, beta testers, for all their money and or hours of hard work, what did they get? Well, clearly not what was promised. The team speaks of wanting to avoid negativity, yet it creates it through all these actions. Creates it through unfulfilled promises and a mask of lies we've all seen through now. Yeah, silence us if you wish. I'm Chinese. I already know what it's like. Ban me. Go ahead. But I'm not the only one with these views. I'm not the only player Calvary's lost because of this mismanagement, if a euphemism isn't too soft. We've been generous enough to provide you with all this feedback and our point of view on the situation. How long will it take until the team acknowledges the game is not without its players? How long until the frustration boils over? By the way, this came out far nicer than I, how I actually feel about the situation. Thanks in advance for the ban or timeout I'm probably going to get. She did not get a ban nor a timeout. Instead, they shut down the Discord server. Since shutting down the Discord server, the fight has been continued on both fronts. Some trolls would attack the Discord in the form of a threat that wasn't entirely closed, and ETG would issue a statement about being sent death threats and how they would be, including the police, if this doesn't stop. Please stop. I don't think any one of us condones death threats. But it seems the more they struggle to silence their audience, the louder they all seem to get. And this is what we would call the Streisand effect. What this means is that the harder you try and silence something, the louder it gets. And I quote, It is a phenomenon that occurs when an attempt to hide, remove or censor information has the unintended consequences of increasing awareness of that information, often via the internet. And we can see this absolutely in effect. The harder ETG pushes back in trying to keep the players quiet and keep them silenced, the more it appears these players are just continuously attacking them and showing them that they will not be silenced. I really fear that there is no end to this. 
I am supposed to give some insight or a point here at the end of this fiasco, but all I can do is be reminded of a situation I found myself in a few years back. I used to work in a toxic, positive environment, and in that environment I was also not appreciated. I remember we had this big board where we had to write a positive thought for the day, every day. And there was no space in that workplace to talk about things that truly hurt you. In the span of four years, I developed chronic depression and would eventually have a nerve breakdown in the office. I remember distinctly the day I cracked, so to speak. I could barely make eye contact, I could barely speak through my stutter, I developed a tick bad enough to bruise my body, and my boss, in her infinite wisdom, had said, remember to clean up before you leave. This whole situation is very reminiscent of that. A person who demanded positive thinking at all times and who showed no empathy when the people around her were in trouble because she didn't want to acknowledge the problem. This whole situation started, Molly, because your workers were frustrated about their working conditions. And the sad thing is, the whole situation could have been averted and solved by a simple sentence. What can we do to make the situation better? But instead of taking that route, you charged ahead with anger and bitterness and essentially took a hammer to everything that you built. You have now reached a point where you are banning people for speaking up on Facebook and Instagram and with every single one of these actions you are pushing your players further and further away and your game will die as a result. So let me give you some advice from a person who understands what these people went through. Take a moment and sit down for a second and see the situation through the eyes of your moderators, of your ambassadors and of your players. Try and understand where their frustration is coming from. Think about how that whole situation would make you feel and then write up the apology you would want to hear. Despite everything, you still have a passionate and loving community who are waiting for you to do the right thing. And the second you do that, the second you say the words that they are waiting for, the second you offer a truly honest apology, they, even your detractors, even myself, might come back to you. We're all waiting.